a very good day uh, to Dr. Maimuna as well as Dr. Mustafa. My name is Chin Wen Ken and I'll be presenting my undergraduate final year project too. So my topic is influence of cabal structure towards performance of Emirates Malaysian Real Estate Investment Trust. So these are the contents that I'll be going through. So first and foremost, uh, what is a read? A bit of background. Uh, it is a tax exam entity, uh, meaning that it does not uh, need to pay any corporate tax on income. So at the same time, uh, there are regulations in place. 90% of their total taxable income must be distributed as dividend every year. 75% uh, of its asset uh, must be invested in real estate uh, to generate uh, income, rental income. And there is also a gearing limit in place. Yeah, so it must not exceed whatever financing must not exceed 50% uh, of the total asset value of the REITs. So uh, we understand that REITs uh, do not have sufficient internal source because of uh, there is 90% uh, is gone and there's uh, very limited uh, retained earnings. So a form of expansion would be uh, acquisition and additional properties into the portfolio. So uh, if this doesn't happen, so the REITs uh, distribution will remain stagnant and rental net operating income will decline over time. So we understand the concept of time value of money. So since our focus is given on external financing, so we have two options left, which is either through debt or equity. Yeah, so but debt will always incur uh, risk of bankruptcy where we see the interest rate increase. Yeah, so uh, the ability to uh, uh, return uh, whatever uh, there is borrowed and there is also an absence of tax shelter yeah, since uh, that it is a, a tax exam entity. Uh, next we look at equity. Equity there is a cost of information asymmetry where investors perceive that uh, the, the, the equity is currently overvalued. Yeah, so and there is also increase of share circulation uh, in proportion to increase in company revenue. revenue. So there is a lower uh, DPU uh, where it will cause shareholder depression and ultimately sell off uh, and prices will decrease. So when we look at the gap, uh, there is very limited studies uh, between the relationship between capital structure and REIT performance uh, due to its unique corporate tax requirement. Uh, so we would like to look into uh, this topic. So the research question and research objective. Uh, first, uh, what are the factors affecting decision on capital structure in REITs? Uh, and the second question is, what is the relationship uh, between the both? So the objective is of course to identify the factors affecting uh, decision on capital structure in REITs and to examine the relationship between the both. So the scope of my research, uh, of course, first and foremost is uh, 17 out of 18 M REITs, uh, which are listed in Busan, Malaysia. I excluded KIP REITs because it was uh, it is a newly launched uh, REITs uh, in 2017. So for my study period, it is 2010 to 2019, a 10-year study period. So for capital structure, I used uh, cost of equity, cost of debt, weighted average cost of capital, uh, debt to equity ratio and debt to asset ratio as my proxy and for REITs performance I analyze using dividend yield, Sharpie ratio as well as Jensen's alpha. Uh, for my literature review uh, basically categorized to four parts. Yeah, so uh, we have the capital structure theory uh, starting off with the Modigliani Miller theorem uh, on capital structure ir irrelevance principle. Uh, next, we have trade-off, packing order, agency, the, the very famous and common theories uh, in explaining capital structure. So capital structure in REITs, yeah, and thirdly, factors affecting capital structure decision, and finally, uh, relationship between the both. Moving on to my research methodology, so these are uh, the flow chart that I have uh, uh, inserted. So basically for my research approach, I'm using a quantitative uh, research. So uh, I'm using systematic review uh, to uh, analyze uh, the factors affecting decision, which is for my first objective. And for my second objective, uh, examining the relationship 
Yeah, so I'm using correlation analysis. Next, moving on to my data collection part. Uh, for sys this is the review protocol uh, uh, used for my systematic review. So first and foremost, uh, first step is to identify the research question. Yeah, so uh, which is my research question one. So these are the keywords that are used: uh, factors influencing, uh, determinants, uh, read capital structure, read financing decisions. So uh, some of the database that I used uh, are, are listed here. So these are the five databases. Next, uh, after after that, uh, the the paper count is thirty three. Then exclude duplicated studies using Mendeley eighteen, and uh, finally filter it and uh, using the inclusion exclusion criteria we have thirteen. Moving on, uh, this is the example uh, for my inclusion and exclusion criteria. And next, uh, for my workings and uh, I use uh, formula uh, for calculation yeah, so we have interest rate kd and i'm using uh, capital asset pricing model uh, to calculate my cost of equity so i inserted a formula for weighted average cost of capital as well as beta this is uh, to calculation for my uh, financial performance uh, as, uh, aspect so we have dividend yield sharpie ratio as well as jensen's alpha so this is an example of my working in Excel for one of the companies. So from 2019 to 2010. Yeah, so the first half of this part uh, involves the calculation for cost of debt, uh, which is uh, interest rate. And the second half will include uh, calculation for weighted average cost of capital. So this is the workings of uh, calculating uh, the beta. And uh, finally, which uh, leads us to uh, when I tabulate all of it, it comes to KPAM, Sharpie Ratio, as well as Jensen Alpha. So for the systematic review results, uh, I've summarized it. So first and foremost is the publication sources overview. So here we have uh, 13 uh, publications. Uh, and all of them are 100% uh, journal. And next, which is the temporal view of publication, uh, which is, uh, in other terms, is also noted as the growth of publication. So here we have total of uh, 13 uh, studies. So average every year, we have one to two. And here we noted that in 2011, there's a spike with the highest recorded number of uh, five studies. And in two of these years, 2013 and 2018, we have uh, zero. Next, uh, which is the citation status. Here, uh, among all the 13 studies, it is noted that uh, the results are quite good. And four out of 13 are cited uh, 21 to 50 times. And most notably, uh, most notably sorry, uh, studies, two studies have been cited more than 50 times in other studies. So moving on to my objective one, uh, which is to identify the factors affecting decision on capital structure in MREITs. Uh, here we find a total number of 19 factors. Yeah, so uh, overall, there are eight factors that appeared at least four times. So showing importance and strengthening its position in this uh, subject. And I would like to highlight three factors within the eight, which are growth opportunities, profitability, and firm size. They stand out because they are mentioned eight times out of the 13 studies uh, included. So showing a certain uh, highest degree of uh, significance. So this is the summary uh, where the different authors have uh, come out with their results and their findings. Of course, we have a mix between uh, some authors that quoted uh, positive, some authors find that a negative. So for the negative side, uh, one of the explanation would be uh, managers would uh, further export equity rather than debt in high growth situations. So somehow explaining the negative relationship. Uh, in terms of profitability, it's the same. We have a positive and a negative relationship uh, findings. Uh, so basically, uh, for the negative side is uh, 
it is noted that it, is, it only becomes a factor due to the consequence of the financial crisis. Uh, th finally, which is the firm size, uh, here we also have a positive and negative side. Yeah. So uh, on, in terms of the negative side, uh, basically it's a decreased informational asymmetries as firm size increase. Yeah, so as the becomes bigger and bigger, so uh, informational asymmetry would uh, definitely uh, be reduced and equity issuance will be less costly. Moving on to my objective two, which is to examine relationship between capital structure and REITs performance. First, we look at uh, the significant negative relationship, which is uh, circled in red. So we have cost of equity and Jensen's alpha, WACC and dividend yield, weighted average cost of capital and Jensen's alpha. So all these three prove that uh, there is a significant and a very strong negative relationship uh, between the both. So uh, we look, we also uh, find that there's a mixed results, uh, but inclination towards a general negative but weak relationship between capital structure and REITs performance. So uh, the positive ones are the ones in green and the negative one are the ones in blue. So the explanation towards uh, uh, negative correlation. So we we find that uh, generally as uh, costs increase in terms of interest rates, expenses. So uh, definitely the uh, after all the deduction of the cost, uh, the earnings available for shareholders would always uh, be lesser. Yeah. So for the mixed results, uh, it is noted from Bao two thousand seventeen that. Uh, relative leverage position and market conditions are uh, two integral elements in explaining the relationship between two. So uh, neglecting either one uh, will always cause bias and inconsistency. Yeah. So uh, the author also provided uh, examples of uh, positive relationship uh, from Babdari as well as a negative relationship from Penman. So uh, the reason behind it is because the both of this, uh, their 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 background is. Uh, their sample study is one is in a uh, uh, market that is experiencing uh, rapid growth, whereas uh, the other one uh, is experiencing a bearish uh, market. So it is definitely uh, rational uh, to predict or hypothesize that uh, when when the when a firm uses debt in a in a bullish market, uh, investors would would perceive it as uh, the firm is expanding. They are looking uh, for a way forward. So the prices and the financial performance would definitely increase. Uh, whereas if the firm uses continue to use debt in a in a in a bearish market, so firm uh, the the investors would perceive that uh, the firms are taking too much risk and yeah, so uh, they will lose their confidence and that's where uh, performance will uh, their share prices will drop. So based on these two findings that yeah, I've listed here, the mixed results with inclination towards a more negative relationship from the analysis can somehow be explained. Uh, the Malaysian uh, stock market during my sample period 2010 to 2019 is relatively stable, but uh, it is experiencing a slow and bearish market. So moving on to the limitations uh, time frame 2010 to 2019. Uh, I've only used 17 out of 18 reads and systematic review uh, there are limited publication sites uh, which is only five uh, due to the time constraint and I've, for the performance indicators I've only used uh, three uh, dividend yield, Sharpie ratio and Jensen's alpha so my suggestion would be uh, for further studies to add on uh, different indicators some of the examples would be trainer ratio or uh, total return index, German etc and to consider specific time periods uh, that characterize as market uptrend or downtrend uh, to, do, to further determine uh, the relationship between capital read capital structure and performance in different uh, market conditions. So these are some of the references that I've included. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's all for my presentation.